we will look at now the uh, the third uh, element of the ecosystem that is the delivery services which is a, a very important thing for CEMEX because uh, ultimately uh, delivery services are the ones which are going to deliver uh, the products or the building, building solutions to uh, the customers. So, let us see how it does because delivery services management is for example, truck, ship and train services to transport building materials and fuel for the plant. Basically, these are the logistic services that are needed and capabilities for example, uh, I2 which is the software which is the supply chain planning software and ERP solutions for planning, materials procurement and also the deliveries. Because you are dealing with uh, several of these uh, building materials and they have to be sourced from several of these manufacturers and uh, depending on the customer demand and depending on the time sensitivity of the demand. So, you do not want to keep too much of inventory and so depending on that you have to do the material procurement and also do the deliveries have to be planned. Trucks, shippers and customers are all available on the same communication platform providing visibility for all orders. So, they have created a, a, a communication platform where all the customers, truckers, shippers, everybody is there on the same platform and satellite communication systems, knowledge databases and for example, they have a logistics university enabling knowledge and information sharing and transfer. So, basically here the, the CEMEX has this culture that uh, the, uh, the, the company itself promotes that the sharing of knowledge as well as uh, use of uh, these communication systems rather than the personal visits. So, that is how uh, the whole delivery services management is done through using IT. EEV, you know, for example, EEV stands for electronic, electronic way of managing its business and relationships, portal for distribution logistics, procurement, transportation, management, consulting, etc. So, you can see although it is a cement company, you know 20 years back it has started all this uh, uh, e-way of communicating with the partners, e-way of doing business, uh, e-way of selling products and so on. So, that is the delivery service management that uh, CEMEX has. Now, for example, here um, for example, this is the factory that is CEMEX and this is the seller and there is a customer here and customer obviously it, it wants some building materials and there is a truck here and cement trucks can deliver orders in a 20 minute win window. So, in pro particularly in big cities or anywhere you know people may not have space to save the cement. So, basically if they want they want in a 20 minute window they, this can be given an order it can be delivered. And there is the global digital which enables tracking of the orders and payments. So, for example, you can track the, your order on a cell phone using the satellite communications. And here dynamic synchronization of operations, you know uh, for example, the controls operations, tracks vehicle movements and automatically optimizes the order fulfillment. So, here there is the dynamic synchronization of all the operations. So, there is the plant production and tracks the vehicle movements here and automatically optimizes the order fulfillment. So, for all customer orders there is the production. I mean basically this is a cement factory where things are things are produced and stored in warehouses and so on. But uh, if you look at CEMEX and its agility it looks like as though you are you are it is like order to delivery. In other words, it is built to order kind of uh, framework that uh, CEMEX has developed using satellite communications and so on. So, it, this shows that uh, you know things are not very difficult if you have the motivation to, to do it use communication technologies uh, to basically deliver on order and collect your money. 
So that is the E enabling SAMAX that E SAMAX is, is one of the fundamentals it is also called the SAMAX way. E enabling SAMAX is about building an open corporate information structure that allows all employees and partners to access companies information and resources. And then this is one thing that that is unique to SAMAX that it has the information system which all its partners can access through a password and all the employees they have uh, they have they can they have a courseware from which they can learn on this or they can also see what what the plans are so that uh, what is their what is their functions and how they should do uh, what they should do during the day and so on everything is is accessed and open e enabling consists of three major areas one is e selling electronic storefront that delivers customized online services to customers so as we have seen in the earlier diagram there the customer orders electronically and it is delivered through him in a truck within 20 minutes that's e selling e procurement samex purchase process allows employees to purchase supplies online based on their exact requirements so if the employees want to buy something now here is the e procurement they are already uh, samex must have negotiated with the people so they have all the purchase uh, decisions are made and uh, the prices and all that kind of thing supposing they have to buy some steel for a particular customer and the employee who is in charge can purchase that online based on their exact requirements and it can be supplied either to their uh, distributor store or it can be supplied directly uh, to the uh, construction site and third one which is important one is the e-workforce using corporate intranet connects CEMEX employees globally promoting greater knowledge sharing. So one thing about CEMEX is there is standardization of all the procedures and so on. So if CEMEX acquires a particular company it immediately integrates it into the CEMEX, CEMEX way. So this there is no cultural and other differences it does not care about the cultural and other differences you are in Europe, you are in Asia, you are in this and so on. So while respecting the personal freedom but the way the company works is the e workforce uses corporate internet and connects all employees globally promoting greater knowledge sharing and also there is standardization of processes and procedures. So the Semex way is an IT legend where CEO John Bruno can check sales figures or kiln temperatures in any plant in the world from a communication center in Monterey. So you have basically a control uh, tower from at the CEO and the CEO can it has it has 50 countries so many cement plants it can check and communicate with anybody in Samax the CEO he can sell the sales figures to kiln temperatures anything. <coughs> Samax ready mix delivery trucks are equipped with dashboard computers that allow tracking by GPS technology. So basically the if you are transferring ready mix from there it has to be ready mix it is a concrete so it has there is a time limit during which it has it gets otherwise it gets hot. So basically depending on the distance and so on there are global positioning satellites which uh, allow tracking. And post major integration teams this is called PMI post major integration is this was one of the standard things executives armed with laptops were dispatched to analyze the new acquisition to cut costs to harmonize its technical systems and management methods with some access. So when it acquires I mean it acquires a lot of companies and the acquisition is a big thing for some acts and it spends billions of dollars in acquiring some of these companies and but before integration there is a pre-merger integration teams they basically their executives they 
were dispatched to analyze the new acquisition to cut costs to harmonize the technical systems and management methods with that of Femex. So, Semex is a link with Dell and Cisco as one of the world's leading digital inventors. So, if you say this about the Cisco or Dell, you are not surprised, but the surprise comes here is because it is a cement company. But if you are just selling cement, you should understand the one fact that if Cemex is just selling the cement, then all this would not have been a necessity because it is in a country and it will uh, it will sell cement and usually the cement is ordered a week before or two weeks before and it is inventoried and so on. But here you are selling solutions and solutions like ready mix which is you have to deliver within 20 minutes and the orders can be cancelled. So, there if you want to give all this freedom then you know you have to have this kind of uh, IT services. So, Semex way an information system and process standardization program. So, in 2000 Semex initiated a company wide program called Semex way to incorporate best practices developed by various Semex units around the world into a standard platform. So, basically if there are some standard operating procedures which are followed in other plants. I think what Semex does is to integrate them and it should be followed everywhere. So, whatever is good in their acquisitions they are followed. If something is not, not to uh, their liking I think they will change it. So, before acquisition themes go and find out how easy or difficult it is to integration. So, integration standardization is an important element before Semex procures or merges or acquires some company. This program allows knowledge sharing as well as a more information oriented employee on a global basis. So, wherever you are working whether you are in India, China or in US or if you are working for Semex then all employees are the same. The knowledge base is the same and the knowledge acquisition capabilities are the same. So, but Semex of course expects people uh, to follow and use all the uh, facilities so that to enrich themselves. Semex was able to ride the wave of change in its industry using Semex way. So, basically here is, is the point in Semex way is the one that unifies standardizes the operating procedures. And there is an IT system, there are logistics and all that and there is a planning software I, I2, ERP and other, other kinds of things and you have experts dealing with this. Supposing there is a, there is a downturn in, in Europe and if all the orders that, that you have in Europe are cancelled and if they, you have European cement plants, they find out if they can, that cement can be sold somewhere because they have logistics and other, other equipment or ships. So, they want the ships and which they can be used to transfer the cement, extra cement to, to this. So, the shipping is expensive, but they because of the efficiencies and the processes that they have, they may not be that expensive and it is better than not selling at all. So, the Semex way is basically with a core set of best business practices with which Semex conducts its business throughout of all its locations. So, what are the core set of best business practices which Semex follows that is the Semex way. So, it is the same throughout this one. The approach was instituted in recognition of the need to build one Semex that is more flexible in response to rapid growth and maintains a consistent customer focus worldwide. 
So, you are in 50 countries, 200 plants, but still you are alone, you are one CEMEX and that is the that is the kind of response, more flexible in response to the uh, rapid uh, growth and consistent customer focus. Integrate acquisitions quickly and achieve optimal operating standards. You can see how complex are the delivery services. You know here because we have put everything under delivery services here. It could go into institutions or it can go into into resources and all that. But everything is happening online. You know these are IT and logistics services. This basically getting into delivery and it is the delivery to the employees, delivery to the suppliers, delivery to the employers and so on. So basically the this one. So, how do you integrate acquisitions quickly and achieve optimal operating standards? CEMEX implemented several standardized platforms to reduce costs, streamline processes and extract synergies from global operations. If there is something that is going good in, in, uh, in a plant they acquired in Europe, they will just follow it worldwide to all the plants. So, but then they also streamline all the processes and reduce costs. Some next take steps to improve product quality and reduce environmental impacts of its operations. We are going to see in the next slides that Chemex is very concerned about the sustainability of its operations or the, the impact of uh, its operations on the environment. With each international acquisition, CEMEX refines the technological and managerial processes required to integrate acquisitions into CEMEX corporate structure. Was able to consolidate acquisitions more quickly and effectively. So, this is the a thing with most companies when they acquire somebody particularly from abroad, then integration of that company into the parent company is a difficult task. If this company is from another country, then there are cultural differences, there are language differences and also there are difference, uh, differences in terms of habits, the rules, the institutions, the social groups. So, you have to basically manage this and standardize and brings everything into CEMEX way and so that it is one CEMEX and that becomes a, a, a difficult thing, but it was able to consolidate acquisitions more quickly and bring them to its focus rather than having multiple companies worldwide. So, let us look at institutions in this. So, in the you know so far what we have looked at is we looked at the supply chain and the supply chain becomes complex because it is not just the cement. So, it is not just you put uh, 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 into the kiln, cement kiln and then uh, you get the cement out. In fact, uh, you, should, you should be surprised we did not talk about the supply chain. Uh, for the cement at all because cement is, is just one incidental product. We are concentrating on the services. So, your cement the building solutions is the one that uh, CEMEX supplies and we looked at the resources that are needed and there are more human IT and logistics and that kind of resources. And we looked at the delivery mechanisms and the delivery mechanisms so the you can see that we are not looking at how do you deliver cement from one truck to the other, but we are looking at how do you integrate your employees, we are looking at how do you integrate your companies, your new acquisitions bring all of them into some X way. So, it is a big global uh, attitude then in other words since you are a solutions company 
where cement production is automatic and it is taken for granted. So, you are in the more higher level social networking and the process uh, delivery rather than just the cement. So, let us look at the, what the uh, problems that it faces about the institutions which are the governments and social groups. So, if you are looking at uh, Atern, the patterns of multinationalization for cement industry is that the presence of big six firms is bunched. In other words, the largest MNEs have a tendency to locate in the same country markets. Well, why is this happening? God knows why. All the companies, whole same, same X, uh, uh, all these six companies of different origins. If one company enters uh, Bangladesh, everybody enters Bangladesh. When one enters India, everybody enters India. If one enters China, they enter into China. So, mimicry or strategic convergence or imitation herding so as to appear with it or so as to avoid standing out. So, it is either mimicry or it is herding. So, if somebody enters China and, uh, and they make profits, so you, if you do enter and do not enter China. Then, then your management may fire you saying that why did you not enter China, other company has entered China and then it made profit. So, you want to go since other some company has entered, you also want to enter China. Supposing some all the companies which had entered failed, oh you can say that oh, everybody has failed, so we have failed. So, that the management will not will not single you out. But on the other hand, if everybody does who enter China or some other country, they do well and you do not enter, then you will have a problem. So, th this is the problem of uh, herding or strategic convergence or you can call it mimicry, whatever. But it is true particularly with the cement companies that uh, you know when one enters, the others also enter and so on. But this is true uh, with most other verticals as well. The major cement company multinational enterprises typically enter new markets by acquiring existing capacity often during economic downturns. That is because you know building uh, a factory and all that it becomes uh, difficult to kill and all that it takes time. So, if you acquire what is existing during an economic downturn then you can wrap up very quickly and try to get to uh, the solutions uh, as fast as possible. MNEs achieve competitive advantage by operating the physical assets more efficiently. So, in other words, how do what is the difference between between various companies? So, if one company, if you are just selling cement, you have to basically lower your cost, make your operations more uh, more cheap and try to use more your fiscal assets more efficiently and reduce the cost so that you make some profits. But on the other hand, we are dealing with a company which uh, is different. It has, it is selling not just cement, it is selling business solutions. But the entry business we are talking of cement companies. So, the cement companies basically concentrate on uh, on their physical assets as well as trying to improve the efficiency of their assets. And that is where most of these plants they work for um, 25 hours, 24 hours a day and all through this one because it is a continuous plant to continuous process. So, restrictions from markets, governments and society. I think this is important in the cement this one. You have restrictions from the markets. Why markets? Because they are local companies producing cement and uh, you are they face competition if you come in. So, there will be restrictions from that. They try to use their political influence on the governments. 
And of course, there will be governments uh, which are basically putting restrictions on pricing, restrictions on uh, sustainability of your this one, the GHG gases and so on. And also society that is because you are coming into uh, into the country or enter into a region and yours is not a very uh, one of those products which are enjoyable you know. In other words, it is a high temperature uh, large uh, GHG gas producing uh, cement using uh, lime and other kinds of materials. So, it is not a neighbor, it is not a very good neighbor. So, the society may not appreciate it. So, there will be restrictions from all of them. And one has to face this uh, in the cement industry. And there is of course, trade barriers. The trade barriers uh, government intervenes, uh, for example, anti-dumping uh, or some other uh, this one and also quality of the of the cement when if you are importing or exporting those there could be trade barriers. And import restrictions uh, to feel secure from international competition. In other words, there could be restrictions. And also one thing one should understand the indirect procurement. Cement is an indirect procurement by the governments. So, the government procurement could be huge. In other words, all the buildings, airports and uh, the government buildings they, and the roads, all these are basically the government owned and the money comes from the government. So, if the government differentiates the foreign owners and local and so on, it wants to give it to the local companies and all that, then that is the kind of restrictions you face the from your competition which is local. In other words, anything that the government buildings, government construction activities, if they are they, they uh, uh, procure only from local cement companies and not from foreign companies, that is the kind of uh, discrimination that this you have to face if you are a foreign company. So, there could be import restrictions and so on. An imposition of anti dumping duties. And environmental regulations and the application of rules and, uh, and limits on market access and pricing within across countries. And CEMEX faces substantial currency risk as it operates many countries. You know, if the dollar goes up and down, and it depends on which currency it uses, and if it is only uh, operating on uh, one or two currencies, so since it is from Mexico, a Mexican currency, and the US dollar, then for others it has to basically see if it receives say Indian rupees, how do you convert a Chinese yuan, how do you convert it, when to convert it because this, this uh, currency, foreign exchange currencies are changing every day. So, you may lose lot of money. So, it basically faces substantial currency risk and not only CMEX, uh, any company, uh, foreign company faces those. So, these are kind of uh, risks that it faces from the institutions but they may look simple, but they are heavy. In other words, if you are involved in anti-dumping duties, then you have to take it back. If you are involved in environment regulations, then you have to reduce the, your gas emissions. If you cannot, you have to close down the flights. So, how do you reduce the gas emissions? The gas emission reduction depends on your processes. So, you have to change the processes. So, that takes time, energy and also you have to stop production and all that. So, basically these are all may look simple one lines, but all of them are highly involved. So, what we have done so far is look at the ecosystem of this one. So, while presenting the ecosystem, we have presented all the properties of CEMEX you know its resources, uh, what is its supply chain, what it is, <coughs> what it is selling, what are the kinds of risks it faces from institutions and so on. So, let us look at now the next step once you have uh, the ecosystem. The next step is the GRIP framework. 
the grip is uh, the governance risk i innovation and performance network performance framework as before uh, what we'll do is uh, uh, we'll we'll present each of them so what are the governance structures here so you can see of course there is a ceo you have this is for building materials you are selling building materials but still you are producing cement so you have a manager production who procures he maintains the logistics and the delivery of the cement and the quality so this is the cement vertical but there are services that you have to basically require their financial services there are ICT, ITES and HR and all those these are for the entire company you require these manage these services. So I have separated these two from the, the rest of uh, providing construction solutions here. So these services are important for example your Samex way E enabling and all these come under here manager services this is basically the heart and soul of of uh, Samex. But of course the cement production is important but uh, you know it is mixed with all the building materials right. So you have several customers and you want to provide solutions for each of your customers. So the manager small customers, the small customers are house building uh, customers they want to build a house, small house and they require of course the design the architect and uh, they design them they require the materials the building materials and also they require the finance. So these people are all this manager here he, con he is contacted and he provides he is responsible for providing the solutions here. And if you have high end customers like somebody is building an airport somebody is being a, building a big hotel and so on then you have contractors because the big con this one is the contractors you have the procurement of all the materials you have to maintain a supply hub and you have architects and so on. And cement goes here, the cement goes here and it goes here but it is incidental. And finally if you are talking of distribution this one then you have a distribution, you have procurement, you have advertisement, uh, you have uh, the computers, training, everything is done here and this is a part of the HR training here. So you can see that uh, the governing structure that we are proposing, governance structure that we are proposing here is basically customer based governance structure here and taking out of course the cement production outside of this and also managing of the services that interconnect all these people and also it connects these, serv these services connect to outside people, outsiders who are providing the services. I mean this gives us the impression that that Samex when it is providing building solutions it need not have to produce or product uh, 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 procure the cement from uh, any cement factories it can be from anybody maybe it is true but still this is the kind of organization structure that we have for Samex. So the governing structure typically is whatever we have been studying and uh, it is based on uh, the customers and also we have centralized production and services which is very typical of uh, this one. And Semex itself here it acts as the as far as the governance concerned it acts as the uh, vertically integrated this one. 
and this is although we are talking of manager production there are several factories all over all over the world there are 50 and odd countries so you have the CEO deals same CEO deals with several of these managers and you can think that there are 50 of them here and these services are the same Okay, under the under the CEO, so basically they integrate all these fifty factories and all these people. So you can see the complexity. Although we were saying just it is some instead of uh, cement, it is uh, you are supplying services. You can see the complexity of the organization structure, which uh, has to be dealt with. So uh, basically this is the kind of governance structure that CEMEX should follow for their efficiency. So let us look at the performance, I mean the, the, the CEMEX uh, this one as we said before that it, it acts as an orche uh, orchestrator here and whereas it acts as an in vertically integrated uh, uh, enterprise in this whenever cement production is considered. So, the services basically help in the orchestration. So, what is the performance? Let us look at the performance in 2012. December 31st, 2012, 50 plus countries where CEMEX has presence and trade relations in approximately 100 countries. So, it has presence in 50 trade relations in 100, it just sells cements and it has 43,905 employees worldwide, 43,905 employees on this. So, it manufactures 94.8 millions of tons annual production capacity and it has 55 cubic meters, million cubic meters of ready mix, 159 million tons of aggregators. 57 cement plants plus 12 with minority participation and 1899 ready mix concrete facilities, 371 aggregate quarries, 221 land distribution centers, 69 marine terminals. So, you can see that they have this I mean we did not give here, we do not have the figures how many trucks and how many ships it wants, but it has the it has basically 69 marine terminals from where it basically shipped the uh, this one it has it is dealing with 100 so 50 countries basically it supplies this it uh, exports uh, cement to from its plants and this is uses the marine plants and also these marine plants and others in case of downturn and to balance out uh, uh, the inter-country variations in terms of demand, Cemex uses uh, these marine terminals here. So, you can see that the performance is, is basically outstanding in terms of uh, the country and enabling home ownership and self-sufficiency. So, uh, that is the first one of the uh, uh, this one is uh, in terms of the performance. How many patrimony Hawaii is a CEMEX flagship social business that helps low income families to improve their quality of life through dignified housing through a well planned savings scheme. So, during 2012 it reached 42,900 families, 42,900 families as a kind of CSR corporate social responsibility does. What are the kinds of innovations does? CEMEX named most innovative enterprise in 2013, manufacturing leadership, uh, manufacturing leadership 100, uh, 100 awards. So, it has basically received uh, several, uh, this is 21, uh, I am sorry, this should be 2012 award, manufacturing leadership award. So, when you are looking at the performance of, of this, it has received several awards and all that, what you have to do is look at the sustainability initiatives. What are the kinds of sustainability initiatives that uh, it has in terms of performance, we are trying to judge 
it's the some experiments in terms of the GHG gases and how. So, there are three main sustainability objectives enhance its value creation. CEMEX aims to deliver the innovative high performing products, services and solutions to resource constrained society requires for a low carbon economy. So, basically you are providing these products and services there is a resource constraint society requires for a low carbon economy. Man has the carbon footprint. Samex tries to minimize the ecological impact of its operations in the communities in which it operates by carefully identified by carefully measuring and reducing the carbon footprint to technically and economically feasible lowest levels. Now, these are the things that are important. You have to reduce your carbon footprint to technically and economically feasible lowest levels. And the third one is engage stakeholders. With highly committed and empowered employees, CEMEX closely collaborates with a variety of institutions with complementary core competencies to strengthen the local communities. In other words, CEMEX cannot do everything alone. So, it basically collaborates with, with others and so on. So, what is the carbon footprint of cement? The production of cement is carbon intensive, of course it is known, requiring high temperature sintering of limestone, clay and iron oxide to create clinker, the base material for cement. And the heating process takes place in large rotary kilns that reach temperatures over 1400 degrees centigrade to catalyze the proper chemical reactions. Both the fuel requirements of the kilns and the reaction processes result in significant religious CO2 into the atmosphere. So, this, this is one thing that I have been saying and the cement industry as a whole represents 5 percent of overall carbon emissions associated with human activity. This is the cement this one an issue that has spurred widespread effort to reduce the carbon footprint of cement production. So, you can see that the kind of problems that that CEMEX faces when it enters new countries and it wants to regulate based on the restrictions on carbon this one. So, what is that that it does? I mean it has a process which is very bad. So, what is your carbon strategy? CEMEX has designated uh, uh, designed its carbon strategy to help reduce environmental impacts of its operations while creating economic value and driving construction industries participation in the development of low carbon economy. So, how do you do it? The key components are reducing ecological footprints of our production process, replacing traditional fossil fuels with low emission alternatives, reducing the clinker content in cement, locating increasing use of renewable electricity and energy efficiency in operations. Aligning operations and initiatives with international standards, regulations and market based mechanisms for emission reduction. These are the standard things that their ISO certified certifications and all that you can follow all this, but you have to basically replacing traditional fossil fuels with low emission alternatives and then use of renewal, renewable electricity and can you use solar this one for making cement for running your kiln or can you have solar farms somewhere so that you can trade carbon. So, there are various kinds of alternatives that uh, that uh, CEMEX follows. Let us look at some of them. So, carbon footprint rule, uh, I mean it has a key pillar of our CO2 reduction effort is our carbon footprint tool 
that helps us quantify the direct indirect amount of CO2 emitted during production process of cement, concrete and aggregates up until the product leaves our facilities. Well, there is the standard proverb that one uses that unless you can measure you cannot control. So, you have to find out what is your CO2 footprint. So, it has a tool for its factory where you know how much carbon is emitted at various points and points in time by its uh, uh, by its kilns, by its uh, uh, trucks and so on. Now, the other thing that uh, CIMEX follows is waste to value. CIMEX carbon strategy is to reduce the environmental impact of its operations as well as drive development of low carbon economy from waste to value. So, CEMEX uses residues or bio products of industrial, domestic, agriculture and forestry processes to fuel cement factories. So, one thing is to reduce the, the gases, another thing is to use the waste that is generated by other processes in its cement kills. The waste includes used tires, spent solvents and waste oils, processed municipal, municipal solid waste household waste, agriculture waste such as rice, peanut shells and coffee husks and animal meal and sewage sludge. These are basically used as fuel. And the process reduces their reliance on fossil fuels. So, one thing is you are converting all the waste to, to value but uh, the, are you reducing the GHG? CEMEX use of alternate fuels increased to 27.1 percent of the total fuel mix from 20.3 to 2010. So, in other words 27 percent of its fuels are from waste. So, it basically mimics the bio ecosystems where waste from one one entity delivers value for another. So, one of the good things that CEMEX is doing is to is to use the waste so that uh, it basically uh, basically reduces the waste and converts it to value mimicking the biological this one. So, developing alternate energy solutions this is another one that CEMEX does. CEMEX owns a wind farm in Mexico with a capacity of 25 percent of energy needed to run the Mexican operations and in 2011 allowed some mix to avoid 489,169 tons of CO2 in this one. So, CEMEX reduces the carbon footprint by using efficient process technologies and changing the way it sources electricity. In 2011, CEMEX Philippine la Philippines launched a collaborative project with Sinoma Energy Conservation Limited to devise a system for capturing waste heat from kilns to produce clean alternative electricity. This is really a novel idea. In other words, cement basically generates a lot of heat. Can you use that heat to run a turbine to generate electricity? So, that is the kind of thing that it is trying. So, this is about the CIMEX uh, this one what are the risk mitigation strategies that CIMEX follows. So, there are supply chain risk, risk from delivery processes, institution risk, source process risk. The managers at CIMEX rarely differentiate between managing risk and managing the business. I think this is a, a highly important point for them incorporation of risk consideration into everyday task is seen as usually a way of running business. So, risk is not nothing new, risk or things happen as like daily operations. So, it is like a control system. So, supply chain risk, CEMEX has SS specific fixed and operating costs in cement plants, terminals, distribution facilities, over supply and demand fall will seriously affect its performance. 
and Cebex invested heavily in port terminals and vessels and developed sophisticated processes to operate them to respond quickly to mismatches in the market demand. So, the, the risk of uh, demand this one, cement is low value to weight ratio product shipping too far away from production is not economical I mean that is known. And Cemex management of trading and logistics is an effort to reduce its industry risk. Innovative business models by handling a commodity product with high value value added services. So, that is how CMEX basically gets rid of the supply chain risk. The institution risks are CMEX faces in the uncertainty regarding the application of environmental regulations and in pricing across countries. So, price environmental regulations are the two. These uncertainties regarding acceptable behavior may limit market access. Given increased public awareness of the role of cement production in global warming, institutional risks come from social expectations about the role of companies and management of environmental risks. So, you can see that the, the we have seen earlier that Cemex does take care of the environmental risk by several ways. So, how do you govern the risk? The day to day management of risk relating to market operations, community engagement, government relationships and legal oversight are concentrated in the hands of local managers and they have more intimate knowledge of the idiosyncrasies of the local environment because they are dealing with the day in day and functions such as technology and finance are highly centralized that is what we have seen. Though Cemex is a highly centralized and hierarchically organized company many risk management decisions are dispersed geographically and functionally. So, that is the typical unusual way it handles the risk. So, to conclude here is the I mean we have taken a cement company and we have studied uh, about it and has become a role model in several dimensions although it manufactures low value high weight product. That is why we are studying this here. Why is it a ro role model? First of all it is business model, second of all it, it is producing a highly environmentally poisonous product GHG gases and all that. So, people the governments does not like it and so it has to deal with several of those considerations, but it is an important product because building construction is an important for every country for every human being and there are several competitors all through the world. So, that is where its problem is. Cemex has won several awards, best innovation award, best manufacturing award, sustainability award and so on. And risk is generally not addressed explicitly as such, but rather tightly integrated into the way the company is organized and decisions are made. And its business model of selling value chains and also social networking with stakeholders in providing client solutions has made it a resilient high performance company. So, I think there are several things that one can learn from by looking at more closely the, the CEMEX uh, this one. So, our aim A is you know to show how our framework of ecosystem framework can be used to explain everything that CEMEX does and this is one of the classic role model examples that we have.